I'm preparing for this multinational ball hockey tournament coming up and a friend who is organizing asked me to help him draw in spectators by helping him develop a newsletter so that we can post it around town and get people's attention with the hope that they'll show up and cheer the teams on. But I'm nervous that I won't be able to do this and our spectator section is gonna look a lot like this. But not to worry too much because Microsoft Word has a lot of features that can help me create a newsletter. The only challenge is that my friend needs this letter ASAP. So let's see if we can create a visually appealing newsletter in less than 20 minutes. So the first thing you should do when you're creating a newsletter is to create different sections. That'll allow you to format different parts of the same document differently. And it can add a little bit of visual appeal to your newsletter instead of having this static looking document like I've got here. So we'll add four different sections. I've got section one here, section two, section three, and section four here. But they haven't been created yet, so this is all just one big section. What we have to do to create different sections in our document is to choose first where we want to place this section break. So what I want to do is click this about the tournament part, and that means it's going to separate anything before that uh, from this heading. So that's what I want to do, select this. And I've also got, in the Home tab, there's this Show Hide option. Uh, breaks, when you add them in Microsoft Word, don't show up automatically. They're kind of invisible. So if you turn this on, at least you get kind of a, you can see where the breaks are placed. But even then, they're really hard to see. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So the first thing we'll do, we'll add our first uh, continuous section break. I'll click the Layout tab, and then go down to the Break drop arrow. That's going to open up this Breaks menu. You can use these breaks for different purposes. but if you're creating a newsletter, the continuous one's gonna be the most useful to you because you can create a kind of a break or sections, you can create sections in your newsletter where you can do kind of format the different sections differently. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I'll click this first one. And if we zoom in, you can kind of see that there's like little dots. That's supposed to be a section break, but with the formatting, it makes it really hard to see. So let's scroll down and we'll add our second section break. The next one I wanna do is I wanna stop kind of the the break here. So I'll click this first heading and then do the same thing. Break drop arrow, continuous section break. Now you see that one's a lot easier to see. So you can see there's a little bit of a section break because we've got our show hide button on. And then we'll create a section break right here. You might notice the third name down, that's me. I'm actually playing in this tournament with all the hockey skill that I've got, but back to it. Um, we'll click on the uh, break drop arrow and click a continuous section break. This will be our last section here. So we've got section four here, section three, section two up here, and in our heading, we've got section one. Now for section one, we can start formatting that by clicking anywhere in section one. So I'm going to click here, and then I want to kind of drag the blue part closer to the edge of the page. So you can do that by changing the margins around a little bit. So I'm going to click, again, within the layout tab, I'm going to click the margins drop arrow, custom margins, and then I'm going to change the left and the right sides of this margin to 0.5 to bring it a little bit closer to the edge and still allow a little bit of white space on both the left and the right side. But you're going to see what happens when I add a half an inch versus one inch to this margin and then make sure it applies to only this section. We don't want to apply it to the whole document. That defeats the purpose of what we just did. And then we'll click OK. And you can see kind of the blue line stretches out now so it's not contained within um, the default margin settings. So I'll do the same thing for section three. Section three is the same thing. So I want to get that blue line closer. And you could also, you could also another option would be if you want to go right to the edge of the page, just put zero on the left and the right side. But I want to allow a little bit of white space. Maybe we can add a nice border at the end. And that would be crowded if we put zero on. So I'll put 0 0.5, half an inch, and 0 0.5 on the right side as well. And then again, apply it to this section. Perfect. So we'll press OK. And you see the blue line stretches out a little bit more. We'll leave section four alone, but for section two, I kind of want to push it over from the left margin only so that we can add some sidebars and maybe some pictures on the side of this newsletter. So I'll click anywhere inside of section two, doesn't matter where, and then go to the drop arrow for the margins and then click custom margins. And now I can change this left margin to let's say two and a half inches. So 2.5, that's going to allow us a lot of space on the left side in this section. So again, this section here, press OK. And now you can see, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see sort of for section two of our document, we've got a lot of space. So now we can add in some sidebars and other things like that. There's two ways uh, that you can add text boxes in your newsletter. I'll show you both of them, but this is a great way to add in some further information on the left side of section two here. 
So the first way, and I like this one because it's quick and you get some professional designs and you don't have to come up with it on your own, just click the insert tab and then click the text box drop arrow and you get a whole gallery of professional looking text boxes or sidebars. I like this one, the ion sidebar. So I'm gonna place it anywhere. The only problem is when you add a new object, whether it's a picture or a shape or a text box like this one, it is a little bit pushy. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of drag it down from the center, just below kind of the subheading there. And then I can reformat that uh, here. I definitely wanna make that a lot less wide and as tall. So I'm gonna put, um, the width is okay, it's 1.5. And then I'm gonna put, let's say four and a half inches for the height here in the size area and press enter. And now you can stop being so pushy. We can, I just wanna make sure this is aligned with, you'll see like a little green, oh, there we go. Little green line that it's aligned with the top sort of left side of that blue bar and then the top just below the heading. So to just to the left and that green line pops up, but also just kind of below the, the heading here. Okay, great. So now we've got, um, this is our schedule. So schedule information. That's the title of this. Now there's a few ways you can use a poll quote, which a lot of newspapers and newsletters do where they just copy and paste uh, something from the newsletter, but kind of amplify it a little bit. So like a quote, you, we can do that. We're going to do that in the next one. But another way to add some text in here without having to recreate text is to uh, use information from a different document, or you can copy and paste it from a different document. That works too. But if you want to, if you've already got a Word document saved with information that you need to put in here, uh, the way that you can import it from a different Word document into this text box is to click the insert tab. And then there's this option in the text group here called object. You can click the drop arrow and then say text from file. And I need the information from this tournament schedule. So I'm gonna double click on it. And there it is. It's just a little bit too small for what I like right now. It should match sort of the size of the rest of the text in this newsletter. So this is about nine point font. I want 11. So with this quick access toolbar that comes up, I'll just click twice and that should work out pretty well. It's got the kind of the schedule, but it cuts off a little bit of the text, so I'll pull it down just a little bit, just to cover uh, for more information. And that looks great. Now we'll do a pull quote, which is like where you copy and paste a part of a quote to sort of emphasize it. If it's like something that would really grab your reader's attention. I have this uh, sentence about Team Canada dominating the tournament, so I thought that would be sort of edgy and maybe even controversial. Um, something that would grab somebody's attention. So another way to insert a text box and then we'll co copy and paste that text into that text box would be to go to insert tab, click on shapes. You can put any shape you want and then just start typing, that works. But there's also this text box option um, in the basic shapes or I've used this quite frequently so you can use it there too. But in basic shapes, they have this text box option as well. Um, and you get a little bit more of creative freedom when you put in your own text box so when I start this out, I do want it to be sort of resemble the last one, but not be a little bit different. And so if that last one was sort of a lighter uh, fill, I want to do like a dark fill so you can choose what color you want. Maybe do like a dark blue and then just make sure the, like there's a bright font so they offset each other. Um, and then I can copy and paste this quote. Team Canada hopes to dominate. Maybe I'll fix that grammar error for a second and then I'll copy the quote and then put quotes around it and then I can format the text right there. So copy this, paste it in. And the nice thing about having a little bit more freedom of what to do with your text is that, yeah, so it didn't change it to, because I copy and paste, it didn't change the formatting. But that looks a little awkward. I think I have to change the alignment a little bit. So I'll go over to the shape format tab and then there, in the text group, there's this align text change that to middle, so that looks so much better. Um, I probably don't need that much space, so I'll also kind of just make this a little bit smaller and then put it in the middle. You see the text stays there as well. And just make sure this is also uh, 1.5. So if this is 1.5, just like the last one, that's great. And then we'll just make it a little bit bigger in height. There we go. And you can add some other effects. Um, this, is, uh, this is nice about you know creating your own text box. 
you've got a lot of options. One of my favorite effects is the bevel one because it looks like it's kind of pushing out, has some edge to it. Um, I'll just do the basic one. There's tons of options, but this looks really nice. It kind of looks like a little button, like you can press on it almost uh, in a PDF or a Word document. So that adds a little bit of visual appeal as well. And those are just two different ways to do text boxes. The first one, you have some great options, uh, professional design, but you don't get a lot of like control over what you do with it. And the second one, just from the basic shapes, you can control what you do with it, add some effects, things like that. It's a lot easier to have a little bit of creative freedom. So two ways to add uh, text boxes. Now, a newsletter would not be complete if we did not add some drop caps. So it's not a newsletter. If we don't have some drop caps, you might've seen it. It's a way to grab the reader's attention. So a lot of magazines and newspapers will do this where, and you've probably seen it yourself, where the first letter in a paragraph is like hilariously big. Um, that's called a drop cap. So you can do that in Microsoft Word. It's been around, that feature has been around for so long. So we'll just highlight the first letter in this paragraph and then go to insert and then the drop cap icon here. And then you, you, can, you can just choose drop and that would be great. But if you're very creative, you could choose other options as well here. So I like the dropped option. Um, you probably don't need it to be as extreme as three lines. So maybe I'll just choose two and press okay. But you can choose a whole bunch of different fonts if you want. You, you could try them out. I suggest experimenting with this and see which ones you like, but I'm gonna trust Word's judgment here and use the default one. So I'll press okay and there we go. So, and then I'll just kind of repeat the same thing. Um, for the other first letters. So again, if you want to see that, how to do that again, it's it's just add drop cap. And then this time I'm just gonna say drop, but actually I, I like the two line option there. So I'm gonna say drop and then two. All right, we'll just keep doing that pattern. This is really important when you have a newsletter or newspaper or magazine to draw the reader's attention in. And that way we might actually get some fans for this hockey tournament instead of being uh, all alone. <laughs> so um, that's important to get people's attention, right? You wanna drag them in, make them read the article. Okay, by using some drop caps. And then we'll just do it one more time for this last first paragraph under each heading. So that's usually how it is. After each heading, um, don't don't be putting drop caps in every part of your document. That, that won't look good, so don't do that. <laughs> so just um, just where you need it. So usually under headings, the first the first letter under major headings. And that's it. Yeah, so that's a drop cap. So as it currently stands, this title is not getting anyone's attention. So we have to change this so that we can get people's attention. And what we wanna do is erase the formatting that's already on this title. So the way you can do that, if you have to erase formatting or if you try something and you wanna just kind of erase it, clear it so we can start over. Um, in the home tab, it has this button called clear all formatting. So we'll do that, just turns into regular text. It did do something kind of funny to this blue square, but we can get rid of that later. And then we'll insert a word feature called word art, which is more eye-catching. So uh, we'll just go to it. It's a little bit like a text box though. It adds a little bit of a text box that we can kind of reshape and reformat after, but it is going to be a little bit pushy, just like a real text box or shape or object in Word. And we can, we can deal with it when we add it. So insert word art right here in this text group in the insert tab. And then you've got a variety of styles here that you can choose from. I like this kind of plain one, fill blue accent color one shadow. That's a long name because it's got a lot of like elements to it. It's got shadow options, borders, that kind of thing around the uh, the letters. But I like this one. For now, let's format this because it's getting a little pushy here. So if, when you've got something at the top or the bottom of your page, a really good um, text wrap, the uh, top and bottom one. So we're gonna add that one. And then we also want to fix this on our page because right now it's just kind of floating around, kind of jars the rest of the document if you let it kind of float around. So instead, we're going to kind of anchor it to the page uh, by choosing the fixed position on page option. And now when we move this back to the top, I don't know why it <laughs> went down there, but it sort of fits everything back into place. Oh, well, we want to move it down just enough so that blue square disappears. Okay. And now I can kind of, I want to make sure this is in the center. So if I drag this towards the center, you're also going to see like a green line pop up that tells you it's centered. And I want to make this about uh, seven inch. I'm going to keep going until I want to stop. Uh, seven inches is good. Okay, now this looks pretty small. So we're going to add some effects to not just increase the size, but increase the alignment of this text so that it catches people's attention. And and I was reading this in a book that um, if you have mostly like a document of mostly just vertical and horizontal text, but you have like one line that's diagonal 
catches more eyeballs. So that's what we want to do in this title. And you can do that. There's a little in this word art styles, text effects, drop arrow. Um, if we go to the transform menu, there's a bunch of options here you can try out. Don't go too wacky with this because like something like this isn't going to, I can't even see that text, but um, something simple like this chevron up kind of adds a little bit of, yeah, just something that's just not perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal, kind of on an angle. So that would be great for a title. All right, so I skipped ahead a little bit and added some pictures, but you might notice that in the picture that I'm gonna add right now, it's actually an icon uh, that you can insert in Microsoft Word. It's pretty much the same steps. So we're gonna add a text wrap, uh, we're gonna color format, things like that, and make sure that it fits nicely on the page, but doesn't disrupt any of the text in our newsletter. So to do that, or to insert a picture, you would just go to the insert tab and then for pictures, I had two pictures saved on my computer. So I just went to picture drop arrow and chose from file, but you can look up online pictures that are totally copyright free as well. Um, I'm going to look for an icon that has something like a trophy in it to fit kind of the last paragraph, because that's kind of the theme of the last paragraph. So I'll type in trophy. And we've got two, I'm not sure which one I'd go for, but I think I like this one. So we'll insert it. It's going to be rude and disrupt a lot of the text on our page, but that's okay. Okay. So we're, actually this one was kind of nice, but it's uh, it's a little bit pushy until you add a text wrap. So just like a picture, um, I have to add some kind of text wrap to this so that it wraps nicely. For pictures and icons, I use the tight text wrapping just because when you move it, it kind of just you know, it just pushes the image or icon as close to the text or whatever the next shape as close as it can get. So that's why I use the tight text wrapping for uh, pictures and icons. Okay, I'm gonna make this nice and big, put it in this section that's kind of empty right here. And then you can also just kind of make sure that now it's a fixed position on the page. It's kind of anchored there. And I'm not too happy with the color so we can change it, which is nice. Let's try and make it match some of the blue that's going on. Or you could just make it. Yeah, that one kind of matches the header real nice and it kind of sticks out. So I, I'll probably go with that one, like a standard color. There, yeah. Okay, so that kind of looks nice. That's exactly what I did with the two pictures on page one. Just inserted them, added the tight text wrap and just kind of moved them where I wanted to. And uh, you can do that for icons as well. Now, no newsletter would be complete without adding some columns to it. So for this one, I've only got a little bit of information. So I'll just separate this section into two columns. So I'll select the, uh, the first text here and put my insertion point there and then hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then click again at the end of the text, select all the players and uh, what position they play and where they're from. And then we're gonna go to the layout tab and choose the column drop arrow. Now you might just be able to just say two or three and just click there. If you want more options, uh, you got more columns. Uh, one of my favorite options here is to choose a line in between. So once you go multiple columns, you can do a line in between them. That would look great. Um, I'm not gonna do it here because there's something about that goes against team spirit when you put a line in between uh, the team members. So that probably wouldn't make sense here. And you can also change the width of the columns or the spacing in between the columns, so that little space there. And then just, I'll make sure that it's only applied to the selected text here, but I'm happy with two columns, so I'll just press okay. And there we go, we kind of have a balanced uh, column. And now we have an official newsletter. All right, so if we zoom out, we have a pretty complete newsletter. I think I'd be happy with sharing that. I think a lot of people would show up to this tournament. Anyways, I'll actually be playing in a tournament on October 1st in the City of Origins tournament, uh, representing Canada. So if you want to watch, I'll, I'll, I'll share a link on the community page. But if you're doing a lot of reports, especially if it's in MLA format, I've got a whole video on how to properly cite your resources and how to create a bibliography page. And you can check that out in the video on your screen. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you over there. Bye.